POC Network here with another unboxing, this time coming from a company called Miaro, and this is their 1080p portable projector, more like a mini projector since it doesn't really have a built-in battery or anything. It does need a plug uh, in a wall or just to be plugged into a wall in order for it to function, but it is a mini small scale projector that with a large scale image. Uh, as mentioned, 1080p is your resolution that this supports, or up to 1080p. It can project up to 200 inches against a wall or a projection screen, giving you a pretty large image, or as small as around like 35. And they say 35 to 200 because that kind of gives you kind of a, a good range, a safe range to be in while being able to provide the best possible focus. Again though, it's 1080p. It does have Android TV 9.0 installed on it, so it does give you access to all of your favorite streaming solutions, both music and video, so TV, movies, as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection to connect it to. As long as you do, you have everything all in one, a projector, uh, kind of your source for streaming, uh, all in just one unit. So you really don't need anything. You just need the projector. You plug it in, point it at a wall or a projection screen, and you're ready to go. It does have some powerful hardware inside, including 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that allows you to be able to decode up to 4K files. So, and I say 4K lightly, a lot of these companies say, can decode up to 4K. It is not a 4K projector, so keep that in mind. It is a 1080p projector, so it can decode, meaning it can open 4K media, let it be streaming on YouTube or a file that you have in a USB drive. But it's still only going to project at 1080p because that's the top resolution of the projector. So just something to keep in mind. But as mentioned, it is capable of delivering up to 200 inches. You know, that's, that's a pretty big surface area for a projector of this size. And it's thanks to being able to put out up to 6,000 lumens of light. And this kind of competes against certain brands like, uh, we'll say x Gimme that we've covered in the past with the Halo projectors that are kind of similar to this, or the Elfin projector uh, for more of a kind of a closer match uh, different body style, but closer match feature-wise since it doesn't have the battery built in like the Halos do. Of course, this is also a fraction of the cost. This is about a third of the cost of the Halos. So this is pretty cheap, or at least affordable. I don't like to use the word cheap, but it's $249, which means it's incredibly affordable to just about anyone looking for a projector of this size. And it also has some similar features to the Elfin and Halo projectors from companies like x Kimmy. Uh, you have auto keystone and I believe autofocus as well. Autofocus, right? I believe autofocus, but definitely auto keystone. I believe autofocus as well. We're gonna look into that in just a moment once we get it connected and take a look at what it looks like. But you just plug it in and point at the wall and it automatically keystones at a plus to minus of like 45 degrees to try to you know get you a nice square image or at least rectangular image on the wall. And it also comes with a remote with air mouse functionality, which is kind of cool. And we'll also go over that once we're actually playing with it, with it connected to verify exactly how well that performs. So again, $249, great price point in a small package, and it competes with some pretty big names out there. So far, it's looking pretty good. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up. We're gonna take a look inside the box and see what it comes with, see what it looks like, and then we'll hook it up in one of our demo rooms and give you a look at what it actually looks like when it's you know, performing. So we'll start with some of these accessories. You have a user manual and it's kind of thick, but it's probably different languages. Yep, different languages. So it's probably not gonna be too, complica uh, too complex to actually go through. Of course, if you've used a projector before, if you've used Android TV before, you're not gonna need this. Absolutely not gonna need it. You have your plug here in two parts as normal. You have the part that goes with the, with the power brick and the connection going to the unit itself. And then you have the cable running between the power brick and the wall. You have a remote, and this is just a very small remote, typical with just about any small projector and or affordable projector. In the back, you just have a little door that pops open. You got two AAA batteries that go in there. Uh, it's very light and small and compact. Again, Bluetooth. Uh, you have your typical buttons here. You have your power button. You have a mute button. You have the mouse button. You have an input button here. Of course, your directional pad here with an OK button in the middle for selecting things. You have your menu. You have your back. You have your home button. And then you have your volume up, oh, excuse me, actually this side, volume up and down, and this one is next and previous, and then a button in the middle for play and pause. Obviously these two buttons right here, or at least this toggle button plus the main, the play pause button right here is gonna be for playing back, you know, music, videos, or whatnot. And then your volume's gonna be for the volume of the, the actual 
content that you're watching. And there is the, the one thing I notice on here, there's no manual focus. Uh, at least there's no switch to switch the volume. Like some of the XKMEs and some of the other ones have a little switch on the bottom. You can flip that and the volume button turns into a focus, manual focus control. Uh, you don't have that on here, but you might still have a setting in the menu that allows you to control it from the directional pad, hopefully. Because without manual focus, that's kind of a bummer. And so you have the projector. This is tiny and light, since again, no battery. There's no battery inside. So it does need to be plugged into the wall. So that's about as portable as it gets. You do need AC power, you know, some kind of an outlet to plug this into. But as long as you can look past that, it's portable. And, or at least if you don't want to look past that, it's mini. It's a small projector with a very powerful capability. And on the front here, I mean, I'm going to say this again. I, I keep comparing it with the the Halo projectors from Xgimme because it looks identical almost, except for this little leather strap, which is neat on the top. You have uh, on the sides, you have two speaker vents here, or, or just vents that allow the speakers on the inside to be able to, to get out to your ears. On the top, you have a little power button right here for turning it on. And, oh, look at that. Focus. So... Autofocus, hopefully, maybe it's there, maybe it's not. If not, you have this, unless that's zoom. Could be zoom. Let's take a look at the instructions. It is a manual focus wheel. So it is focus, no zoom. Uh, so the size on the wall is gonna definitely be dependent upon where, how far away you have this sitting from the wall. So, or projection screen. So if you have it closer, you're gonna have a smaller image. If you have it further away from the wall or projection screen, then you're gonna have a larger image. Again, between 35 and 200 feet for the ideal perfect image coming from this. So autofocus might not be a thing. Um, auto keystone though, you do get auto keystone, which is neat. You just don't get autofocus. You also don't get the Harman Kardon and some of those others. We'll stop mentioning names, but you know, but again, the price point on this is a lot less. So it does have built-in speakers, sure. It's just not gonna be as nice as you know a high-end speaker company. So you can't expect too much. This is gonna fall more in the range of your typical projector, which doesn't usually offer the best speaker. So if you want really good sound to come from this, you're probably gonna to wanna to connect this to a speaker system or headphones to really be able to get some oomph in what you're listening to. But again, that's normal. That's just about every projector. It's hard to find a projector with good speakers, built in, at least. On the back here, you have a DC input, which is gonna be for that power cable. You have a USB input. This is gonna be for drives with music or videos on it. And then you have an HDMI connection on the back here. Now that is gonna be for just about anything. A video game console, a Blu-ray player, a DVD player, a HDMI stick uh, for you know Amazon Fire TV stick or a Google Chromecast stick. Anything you wanna stick in here because you are limited in terms of what you can cast to this due to copyright reasons and whatnot and what the company uh, explains on their their website and on the Amazon page even you know but if you connect any kind of a fire TV stick or a Chromecast or anything else that allows any kind of casting then you'll be able to take advantage of that just fine using the HDMI connection on the back instead of the built-in Android and then you have your headphone out a 3.5 millimeter stereo out connection right here which is for a line out if you want to go to a set of speakers stereo speakers or a pair of headphones if you just want quiet listening now the hdmi connection that is an input not an output some people for some reason ask that question with projectors that is an input so you know android is inside so anything that it's feeding you is going to be coming out of the projector this is not a device to send video to something else but the HDMI there is for to bring anything else that this doesn't offer in. So Xbox, PlayStation, or anything like that that you'd like to plug into this. Not that you'd want to use that on a projector because projectors typically have a high uh, kind of a latency to them. So it doesn't work out so good, if you're, especially if you're playing online. However, for simple story mode only games, should work just fine. So for audio, if you want to get surround out of this, then that's going to have to come out of whatever source you're feeding it. So if you have a receiver and you want to send, you know, a Blu-ray player to the receiver and from the receiver to the projector, you know, that way, you know, this is simply acting as a screen at that point and your receiver's handling surround. So that's something to keep in mind as well if you want surround sound when using a projector like this. So Miaro 1080p portable release mini projector up to 200 inches. Uh, we have confirmed auto keystone and we've confirmed it has Android TV 9.0 inside, which is a big deal. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to hook it up. Let's go see what it looks like. All right. So we have the projector set up in one of our demo rooms here and we're going to go ahead and turn it on. Now we're probably going to have to move the projector. 
So we have not only raised it up, but we adjusted the focus wheel on the top to get the right focus. It's asking us to make sure it's on the leveled surface, and we're gonna hit OK. So the interface that you're set up with here is really basic, actually. It's a, it's a really simplified version uh, of all of your settings within an Android-type atmosphere. You can see all of your initial hard inputs right here. So you got USB, you have your AV input, and your HDMI input, and you have your My Apps, which gives you just a selection of all your apps in here, as well as the App Store, so you can download additional apps. Of course, right now, we don't have any network connection running to the projector. Now, we have tried inserting a USB drive into it, but unfortunately, it wasn't the right format. Uh, I can't remember which format our drive was in that we just had laying around. It might have been FAT32, could be NTFS. I think it was NTFS, so it may not support NTFS. Either way, you're going to want to look into the instructions to determine exactly what format you want your USB drive to be when using a USB drive with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to YouTube instead once we connect to a valid Wi-Fi network. And actually, we're going to back out of YouTube. We're gonna to go to the home screen here and we're gonna check for updates because it did say that the new version of this was supposed to be with Android 9. And to do this, you're gonna to wanna to go to the settings screen and I'm gonna take a guess that it's the about screen. And wireless software update, there we go. And definitely we are updating some software here. So this is starting to make more sense. So the, when this projector first came out, it was Android TV 6.0, uh, which hopefully with this update, maybe we're gonna look something, or we're gonna get something that's gonna look a little bit more like what Android 9 looks like and not a dumbed down version. I hate to use that word, but dumbed down version of the screen. That's a little simplistic. We want something a little bit more advanced than that. So we'll see what this gets us when it finishes. So it is installing the new version of the firmware onto the projector right now. And the Projector will hopefully, since it's having a reboot during the process, hopefully it will actually go through the auto keystone process as well so that we can see that. So we have updated the firmware and unfortunately we still have the same interface. So it isn't the full Android TV experience. It is a very simplified version, unfortunately, but it is what it is. And uh, again, this is an affordable projector. This isn't something like some of those seven to $800 options that are on the market. This is $250. So this might come down to one of those things where it's just, you kind of get what you pay for, you know? So if you want a much more involved interface, you're going to go with one of those other projectors or in our experience it's best to i mean if what you're looking at here is a good brightness and you're happy with what you're seeing here then just get a fire stick and throw it in there and you're done you don't have to worry about any of this or with a google chromecast or anything else you want to use in the back of this you don't have to use their interface you can just come over here to hdmi and use whatever you have plugged into the back so again your interface is here you got your my apps you got the app store you have quick apps wallpapers you want to change the wallpaper to something a little bit more interesting than what you're looking at here you have those options then you have your settings screen which gives you a lot of settings and that allow you to dial in the projector to your own needs including Projection settings right here. We can determine it where you're installing the projector. Is it a desktop uh, front projection, which means it's just laying on a flat surface pointing at the screen, or do you want rear? Do you want on the roof upside down using the camera threads on the bottom of the of the actual projector and so forth? And then you have auto keystone correction. You can turn that off if you want to. And then the infinite zoom, which kind of unsure what that means since you know it doesn't really offer a zoom setting anywhere. Now you can connect probably a Bluetooth remote for this, uh, to this projector, but this, the remote that comes with it, uh, with it is not Bluetooth, it is infrared. So that is kind of a miscalculation information there, uh, or just a misstatement of information that can confuse people. So just do know the remote you're getting uh, with it is infrared and to control it any other way would, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna probably wanna use the app that you can download for an Android phone or I believe iOS as well. That'll allow you to control it using your phone. Now the menu button, when you hit that, it pops up additional options over here on the side. Uh, you can change the sound mode, music, theater, user. I probably just, it's probably not gonna make too much of a difference since the speakers are so small. Then you have standard, light and soft or user preference for image mode, color temperature and so forth. Uh, keystone correction. The infinite zoom, there we go. That's what the infinite zoom is. It's in keystone correction for some odd reason. And you can, looking at the screen, the keystone correction is okay. 
it isn't the best for the most part. It's gotten the image looking good enough, we'll say. Uh, it, it should have done a little bit better than this, but again, it's a $250 projector. It's definitely an entry-level solution, and it's still doing pretty good for how small it is. I mean, that's a huge picture right there. Uh, it's not filling the projection screen. That is important to point out. It is not filling the projection screen, and this is because of our placement of the projector, because again, your, your image side is going to be highly dependent upon where you put the projector, uh, and how close to the screen or surface that you're projecting against. But in our case, uh, we're kind of hitting some of our chairs here. We didn't want to move anything around in our demo theater here. We just plopped it down, shot at the screen, and this is what we got. So if you want to fill the whole projection screen, this would have to come back a little bit just to do so. But it can. As you can see, it's doing just fine at projecting at the distance it is with a decent amount of color. So again, we're going to try to go to YouTube and find some kind of material to play. Oh, we have some TikToks going here. We're going to search for 4K. And we're going to go down to something nice. Let's try uh, Forest. Forest sounds good. And it's just a 4K video. And again, it can decode 4K. It can decode 4K. But what you're looking at is 1080p because it is not a 4K projector. It's just powerful enough to decode a 4K image uh, or a video file from a file <laughs> if you put a USB drive in there or from a source like this, which is YouTube. And we're going to turn down the volume a little bit since we don't know what kind of licensing we're looking at here and what music is being used on this video. But as you can see here, we're getting a pretty decent sized image. It's pretty large. Uh, this is a 150 inch projection screen. So at the moment, uh, at the size it's projecting against that screen, I'm going to say it's about 140. And uh, again, 140, that's looking pretty good. At 200 inches, it's going to definitely lose some brightness because it isn't. It just it just doesn't really feel like the full 6,000 lumens. Uh, it's something to really point out there. It you know we have a 2,800 lumen projector, I believe it is. The it's a flagship projector from Epson that's installed in this room. That's on the roof, pointing at the screen. When we're using that, it is an incredibly bright picture. This is not really. Right. This is, I mean, it's bright. It's, it's a nice picture for a $250 projector of its size. It's doing pretty good, but it doesn't come anywhere close to the other one. So 6,000 lumens is kind of pushing it. Uh, the lumen range on this is probably a less than 1,000, at least from what we're looking at here. It's still going to get you a pretty decent screen, uh, or at least image on a pretty large screen, but it isn't something that you're going to call a flagship projector. But again, you're paying $250 for this projector, so that's not really much of a surprise. I mean, what you're getting for $250 is pretty good in a small, compact footprint. Also, another thing to point out is the color. Uh, the, the color profile of this projector is pretty decent. Uh, we like it. It looks, pretty de it looks pretty good on the screen. Some of these can be a little bit overblown out or, or just very soft on the color profile. This one seems to, be, had to, to feature a really decent balance to it. It's not that bad. Again, with a little bit more brightness, it would have looked a little bit better. But uh, for what brightness that we have to play with here, I mean, color profile looks pretty good. Uh, we did. We have not set, as you see in the settings, we just we have a set on standard. We haven't changed anything, and this is what you get. So you can change this a little bit in the settings by, of course, popping up the menu and playing with it from there and determining exactly where you want your image to be. Of course, in a YouTube video, it looks like you can't pop up that menu. We're going to have to go to settings to be able to adjust that if we wanted to do that. So we'll go to a different video here with some animals running around on the screen here. Horses running off into the distance. So, I mean, it looks good. It's fast. Again, these are 4K files uh, being streamed off of YouTube, which is pretty decent. It's nice to see that it's processing it without any noticeable, uh, real noticeable latency or anything like that. Um, there's no lagging in between frames. It's doing a pretty good job at processing uh, the video file off of YouTube. But again, I can't stress enough, it's a 1080p projector, so do not get confused or tricked by any projector that says it's a 4K projector, uh, or using terms like it can decode 4K. Well, sure, but it cannot display 4K. So do not think you're buying into a 4K projector. Again, especially at this price range, you're not gonna find one. So it's just something to keep in mind. So really, in the end, our opinion of this projector is it has a really decent image. Uh, it is 1080p, not 4K, so don't, if there's 4K anywhere in the literature, don't worry about it. It is a 1080p projector, and we do wish it had a little bit more brightness to it. It would have been perfect with a little bit more brightness and a little bit more accurate keystone correction there, because we're not really getting that right now. 
So just in case, we're going to turn it off. We're going to power it off and turn it right back on. Since it's an LED projector, you don't have to wait forever for it to cool down. It only takes a couple seconds. Unlike the older projectors with the lens that you had to wait like two minutes for the fan to kick in and keep everything nice and cool before you can actually turn it back on and or unplug it. In this case, it just powers off immediately within, you know, that was about five seconds and the fan was already off. So we gave it a, a reboot just in case, uh, hoping that maybe we can get it to auto keystone and give us a little better image than what it was giving us. And uh, it looks like this is what we get. It's not gonna give us anything else. Uh, image correction, again, only gives us zoom options in there. Again, uh, here, this is an entry level model that has a really great price tag to it. So if you, it, the purpose of buying this projector is you just need something to project. This is gonna be great for kids. It's gonna be great for like gaming dens or watching cartoons and whatnot. It's not going to be an ideal movie theater experience. So if you're looking something or for something for your living room or movie theater or any kind of a, a, a setting where you're, you're expecting just phenomenal video playback and a flawless image on your screen in terms of your keystone and everything else, uh, I mean, you're going to want to go, you're going to obviously spend more money. You're going to be spending upwards towards like 800000 or more. Uh, or in our case, like the projector that's hanging on our ceiling in this specific demo room, I believe when it first came out was about five grand. So it, there's many ways to say that you get what you pay for. But for $250, it's a connected projector that still gives you things like YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Spotify, as you can see right here on the screen, as well as other options as well. Uh, these are just some of the ones that are on the front screen. You also have things like Disney Plus, HBO Max, and so forth. So what you're getting for $250 is a pretty decent sized projection against a wall right here with a pretty decent color profile and plenty of apps to choose from uh, with internet access via Wi-Fi. And of course you have HDMI input going into the back for anything you could possibly want. So in the end, this is a pretty decent projector. Is it perfect? No. We would at least like to see better keystone and better brightness. That would make this perfect in its price point. And it would be unbeatable if it had a full Android experience, uh, like you would see with some of the other options like Halo Plus and whatnot from companies like XGimme. But for, again, $250, uh, just a little bit more brightness and a better keystone adjustment. And this thing would be absolutely untouchable. But for now, it just, we'll just say it's really good. So there you have it. Again, Miaro 1080p portable projector. We're gonna have links and more information in the description below below the video uh, where you'll be able to find additional information about this projector and where to buy it and maybe a few other things including a discount code i believe we might have a discount code if we do we'll make sure to have that in the description as well and of course if you liked what you've seen here don't forget to subscribe hit that subscribe button down there and follow us we have many more videos to come and of course use the comment section below if you want to talk about this if you have any kind of feelings or or questions or anything like that that you'd like to ask us or each other definitely use the comment section as always we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time if you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover remember to subscribe right here subscription button click it you're gonna to want to there's lots of videos interviews previews all sorts of stuff button Click it.